Hey guys, welcome to the mailbag on this Friday, July 19th, 2024. And uh, skip the intro. I know that hundreds or if not thousands of episodes that we've done have included the intro. It's been going on for like three years now. So either I may get rid of the intro or change up the intro. So stay tuned for that. Uh, but that's why we don't have one. And uh, if you guys want to go ad free, Patreon. Apple, Spotify, all offer ad-free options. Okay. Well, let's get to the mailbag. And uh, patrons, as always, you guys get priority here. Uh, Let's, where do we start? Let's start with James from Scotland, who's a patron of the show. And he says, hope everyone's keeping well. After listening to last week's Raw review and you mentioning how crappy Breaker's new music, entrance music is, I've got to fully agree. However, Braun is only one of a few who have absolutely terrible music. Uh, Katana Chance, Caden Carter, Braun Strowman, and Damage Control, to name a few. They're just noise. Damage Control is bad, um, but here's the thing. The group of Damage Control has generally, but not the entire existence of it, has been bad. Uh, Braun Strowman, I mean, he's a one-trick pony, and it's a trick he's lived on, lived on well, but it will force him to hit a ceiling. Uh, His music is, I don't think his music is as bad as the others. I mean, he's got the bra on right at the beginning. And so it's very recognizable. Whereas you put in breakers music and I guarantee you, even the most ardent of WWE fan would probably have a tough time identifying the the, whose entrance music it is. So, uh, all right. I've heard that deaf labels contract is up. I don't know who that is. How many times have I said that, guys? There's so many th- guys and people that you know. I I have no idea who deaf labels. I'm probably even saying it wrong. Uh, but his contract, whoever this person is, is up at the end of the year. I'd love Jim Johnson back, but now I think he's at AEW. I, I think so, too. Jim Johnson, as some of you or maybe all of you do know, uh, was one of the music producers for WWE came up with even Stone Cold Steve Austin's track. You want to, I mean, geez, that's a hell of a track to put on your resume. Um, so yeah, that's a good question. I think he is at AEW though. Uh, let's see. What do you think WWE will do next? If the contract is up? Well, again, I have no clue who that is. <laughs> um, but they're open to, yeah, yeah they, they want young, they want athletic. Um, they're looking obviously for people who have great promos. You know, that kind of, I mean, I got that's not revolutionary, but I don't know. I would imagine that they have this person on their radar. It's hard for me to comment on somebody I don't know. P.S. Can we please stop booing Dom? It's been going on for months. It's starting to get annoying. I feel WWE will need to keep doing backstage segments to allow him to speak and let this feud flourish with Rhea and Liv. All the best, James in Scotland. Yeah, I've been saying that too. Dom and his the, the constant booing of his uh, you know, promos. I get it. Uh, here's the thing. I don't think it's all purely heat that people truly still hate him that much. I think it's been mixed in with a lot of monkey see, monkey do from crowds. Seeing it, saying that's kind of cool. We get to interfere with a talent promo on a level that drowns him out. And so there's kind of the fact, it's kind of like a little bit of a contagion, social contagion, where they see someone do it. It looks cool, so they do it. But also they don't like him. So I think it's a mix of things of why it's being done. But, all right, Freeman, he says, Hi, Matt, don't think, don't you think Rhea is being a little selfish trying to date Dom, or I'm sorry, Tom and Nick Mysterio? Don't you think that she could pick one and let the other one go to live? That's a good point. Yeah, there are there, there are Tom and Nick. Why she has to have them both? I don't know. I mean, maybe we can have our truth decide who gets who. The Gunther versus Priest promo was incredible. I honestly thought that Gunther hit Priest a little too hard in places. I was finding myself recoiling in shock as I saw the look in Priest's eyes. That wasn't normal Priest. He looked genuinely hurt by what was said. Which begs the question, the more the lines are blurred between real life and kayfabe, where the line is, where the line is drawn about what is acceptable and what's not to bring to the table. Priest brought the homelessness stuff up ages ago. 
himself for his own benefit, so he should accept someone attacking him on that angle. But I really don't think he was ready for what Gunther had laid down. But props to Priest, if it did hit him that way, he soldiered on to deliver a great product. Well, Freeman, I think you're seeing a promo that is, as you said, a really good promo. That's what promos should do. We've been very lackadaisical. Rather, I don't know if we as fans are lackadaisical. We've been conditioned to view a promo in a certain way and what we just typically get from WWE. We know that most promos kind of feel the same. They have all their cute little zinger lines and it very rarely does it feel natural and like people are having a conversation that's changed a little bit under the triple H regime. They don't feel as contrived and controlled, but I'm sure there are talent that don't want to have to ad lib. They want some of these lines designed for them because they know they're weak in that department. So they would rather try to memorize rather than having to, uh, you know, pull on some of their weaknesses or, or possibly expose themselves. I'm not saying everybody, and I don't know who exactly, but you can tell if you've been listening to promos long enough as a wrestling fan, you kind of know who's starting to memorize who's not. Now, the real talent are those that memorize have about 95% or 90% of their promo in their head and deliver it in a way that doesn't look like it's memorized. That's, That's true talent. So sometimes some of them are harder to decipher. But I think this one with Priest and Gunther... I think Priest uh, was. I, I think he. Th- this was a, a a moment where I don't think Priest was actually offended or shocked. Um, I think that you are being uh, duped in, in a good way. Uh, maybe that's not the right verbiage. You're being convinced that this was something that Priest didn't expect, but that's the idea. And what Gunther said was, you know, some would say that's out of line. But it got your attention. Ex- exactly what you're talking about. I don't think Priest was actually shocked by hearing that, but he did a great job of selling it. And this is really good. And in one promo, we go from a match that admittedly I had little interest in to, okay, let's go. Am I the most, ex- is this the most exciting SummerSlam main event of all time? I shouldn't even call it that because we know what the main event's going to be. It's going to be, uh, it's going to be uh, Cody versus Solo with, you know, Roman lurking out there, either returning the night before, uh, the night before SummerSlam at SummerSlam, uh, the latest. I mean, we all know that's coming and that's okay. But um, all right, moving on. Joe Hendry has now appeared multiple times on NXT in multiple weeks in a row, each week getting genuine pops and bringing more to the table. If he were employed by WWE, he would be in the title contention 100%. But do you think WWE will let a title go to a different company? Or will we see Hendry being signed to WWE before that happens? On the other side of things, given how hot he is, less is more. Do you think we're going to be overexposed to Hendry before he does anything meaningful? Well, I don't think WWE would bring in the talent if they didn't have ultimate plans for him, I'm sure that they are testing the waters with him to see if they want to sign him. I'm sure that they're, and they wouldn't give him a championship that he can then bring to another company. I don't think that even in the triple H regime that they would want that to happen. Uh, But I don't think that they would bring him in and see something in him. And especially with the response he's now getting, which is the most important, the momentum is building. People like myself who didn't admittedly a month ago know who the hell he was now gets that damn song stuck in my head and his stupid smile in my head, but also it's entertaining. I believe in Joe. I mean, it's in your head now too, right? It's it's great. It's great. So I don't think that they are going to overexpose him yet, but here's the, that's also the, that's tough to manage. Overexposure is a tough thing because you have a talent that's over. Fans who are in attendance come to see the talent that's over. But also there's the 99% of the audience that's actually at home watching and maybe gets a little bit burned out of seeing that person and they don't know it. And how they how you detect maybe consciously how, if someone's being burned out a little bit as a fan, 
when you see them, do you are you are you excited to see them? Do you still feel like seeing them is a treat, or do you or do you just expect it and it's just part of the show? It's a difficult thing to manage because you don't know exactly where that line is of overexposure. It's it's easier said than done. Um, there's not a a book or a manual on how to recognize when a talent has been officially overexposed. You kind of have to just t- regularly take the temperature of the audience. But all right, lastly, just food for thought. One of the big reasons the women's lower card suffers there is there is just not enough TV time to focus on everyone. With the move to Netflix and the show times being changed, I see this situation getting worse as Raw drops an hour and SmackDown getting more advertisements. Do you think we're at a stage where WWE should start ta- taping live some of the house shows and putting them out as a fourth show? No. No more. No more. No no more content. And I don't say that for the fact that I just don't have time to watch it, although that's true. I say it from the perspective of we already have NXT, which is an hour. You have Raw, three hours. SmackDown, two. Now, I know they're swapping, so SmackDown's going to be three and Raw, two. I know that. So, essentially, there's six hours right there. And that's not including if it's a PLE week, which is every three to four weeks. There's another three hours. So, every three to four weeks, you're getting potentially up to 10 hours of TV time on top of WWE, WWE speed, which they're trying to make a thing. Um, so, I, and on top of the documentaries that they're always pushing and a and E specials, the amount of content they push out is absolutely incredible. I think a fourth show would get watered down. It would be like WCW thunder. I, I think it would be a net negative on top of the fact you have staff, uh, you know, just, just from an administrative perspective, logistics, I mean, coming up with you know a fourth show and having even if it's an hour or two, hour and a half, whatever. I, I think that having to think about more storylines and how this one feeds into that one, and also stringing out storylines with another show, which means you have to burn through more ideas before you get to the ple. I, I think that's a bad idea. What they could do here's what they should do: simply put the women on the show, put more women on the show. That's it. If they're telling me that they can't fit in more women's stories in six to 10 hours of programming every week, then it's simply for them not not feeling it's important enough. Remember, remember back not too long ago, Raw was the only game in town. Remember? If you're a fan of the Attitude Era, Raw was it. You had Sunday Night Heat, okay, but that was more of like main event of today. And by the, I didn't even count main event, by the way. There you go. There's main event. You're, you're six. You're, you're like seven to twelve hours a week of wrestling, uh, you know. And so, but Sunday Night Heat back then, sure, count that an hour. So you had three hours a week. Now you've almost tripled that. Um. And sure, they had SmackDown, but SmackDown wasn't you know nearly as compelling as Raw was at the time. And nonetheless, uh, it's simply them either not trying or not caring enough. That's that's what it is. That's what it is. There's no other excuse. All right. Um, so thanks, Freeman. Let's go to Hungry Pup. He says. Hi, Matt. I'm loving WWE these days. Here are some notes for you across Raw and SmackDown. On Raw, the Liv and Rhea program played out beautifully. Best program on Raw. I hope Liv wins and we keep it going. I'm with you there, buddy. I'm with you. Uh, I don't want Rhea to take the belt back yet. The chase is, the money is always in the chase, especially for the baby face. Rhea doesn't need the belt right now. Although I understand we didn't get a, a full run with her. She had to drop it. She get injured for a few months. I totally get it. And she should have the belt back soon, but I'm not ready yet. Live as champion has overachieved. The storyline with Dom and Rhea and live and the love triangle is, is entertaining as hell. It, yes. It's a callback to Eddie Guerrero and China. They're seemingly mirroring that from years past. Uh, Damien works as champion. 
but his time is done. Not sure about you, but I'm 100% behind the King General or General Gunther. Look, Damien has overachieved as well. We all looked at him as a transitional champion, and anybody that said they didn't is lying. Money morning quarterbacking does not apply here. All right, Damien was looked at, I'm sure even internally, as a transitional champion, paper champion. Is his time done? I mean, I don't know. Every time we think he's going to drop it, he doesn't. And think about this too. Gunther as champion. Um, I'm, f- I'm fine with giving it the belt to him if you want to do it. But a guy like Gunther, do you maybe want to even wait to a bigger stage? Maybe Mania? I mean, you can make a case for it. But... Gunther is world champion. I'd never turn. I would never turn that down. I'm all for it, but I'm thinking like WWE, not necessarily like a fan here. And I could see them making the case for Priest keeping the belt. We'll have to see how things lead into SummerSlam, and ultimately, what the hell's Seth gonna do? Sami Zayn continues to amuse with his hockey goal scoring song. Uh, okay, however, he needs to beat someone that matters. Why not Kaiser or Sheamus? Okay, well, I mean, Sami Zayn beating Gunther at WrestleMania (laughs) is certainly something. Uh, Beating Chad Gable, who's fairly uh, hot right now, is a pretty big deal. You know, Um, so there's that. I mean, he beat the guy that's challenging now for the world title at SummerSlam. But I think here's what I think about Sami Zayn, and and I continue to say it. He's... uh, He's been a bit underwhelming for the two people I just mentioned that overachieved. I think Sami Zayn in his title run, not as a character, not in the ring, but his title run has been, I don't do, you know, the first word that comes to mind is annoying and not that I see him as a heel or that I think they should turn him heel. But I'm annoyed by his title run a little bit, and and I don't know exactly why. I think it's still because of uh, I'm a little bit saucy that they didn't put Chad Gable versus Gunther at WrestleMania. Now Chad's still in a good place, very good place with the you know the wide six, and there he's teaming up with uh, the Creed brothers and all that, and it's working out seemingly very well. So all's well that ends well. But I don't know. I'm st- I I just I'm not I'm not excited. How about that? I'm not excited about Sami Zayn's title run. But who's he going to beat? I mean, Kaiser. Kaiser, I'm, I'm all for Kaiser getting a lift. Sheamus certainly doesn't need it. Um, you know, the only thing interesting about Sheamus right now is he's a legacy talent. He's got name brand value. And he's got new music. That's kind of it for Sheamus. Um, could they elevate him at any time? Yes. And I think he's an absolute asset to the company. No doubt about it. Sheamus is an important piece of the puzzle. He's a guy that has a ton of knowledge, has great uh, in-ring, does a great in-ring work. But Kaiser, I think, is more fun, yes. SmackDown, mark my words, we're getting Nia winning the belt. She will stand in the ring and say something like, all hail your queen, and then Charlotte Flair's music will hit. Fair. That's a fair, I think, intelligent assessment and early pick too, I think that Naya does win. Bailey and and Sami Zayn, I feel like I'm going to repeat what I just said about Sami, and it's just that Bailey is not exciting as a character. Um, they're they they're trying a little bit, but ninety percent of the TV time between pre Mania and now has not been very good to help Bailey get established as a character people can get behind or at least move her along. We know who Bailey is, but since she turned baby face a few months, a a few months ago, I still don't really know why, what, what Bailey is. She's not a hugger anymore. She's just kind of Bailey, but like, I don't know what that means. So Bailey, yeah, I think Nia Jax with a championship is just more interesting. I hate to say it because I feel like Bailey hasn't even got going yet with this babyface title run that we wanted. 
but they had nothing for her. Clearly they literally had nothing for her. It's clear because we're seeing it. It's now three months past WrestleMania heading on four. And, um, it, yeah, I mean, so Naya is, I think, a better choice. Cody needs a real opponent. Are we really going to get Cody versus Solo at SummerSlam? God, I hope not. You know, I think we are. The question is, how does Roman Reigns fit into this? Where is he? When does he return? Roman will not be involved in the title match. I don't see any need for that yet because that's not what title that that's not what Roman's after. I think he will actually defend Cody Rhodes. Uh, I think that they're, they'll find a mutual respect among each other and, you know, they'll have a little bit of a confrontation face to face and I don't think it'll come to blows. Roman and Cody has kind of come and gone, but I don't know when Roman's coming back. I think we are a matter of a weeks, maybe this week, um, next week. I, I don't know. Roman is close and with Roman that close. You know, you wonder how does he fit into SummerSlam? But if it's if, if if Roman doesn't show up until SummerSlam, it's absolutely Cody versus Solo. That's what they've built to. I mean, I said the same thing about Priest and Gunther. Oh, they can't do that. Well, it looks like we're doing that. It's also, here's the thing. We need to understand. We can't, as fans, always get the big matches with the big names. We can't do it because if you want new stars and you want to elevate talent to eventually become those stars, you can't have the stars that are already established all all hogging up those spots. So there's that kind of growing pain of a little, you know, it's not always going to be the big names in the big spots because then there's no opportunity for, you know, the younger stars to grow. So... And I'm talking really about Solo here, who is on his way up. Cody's a made man now. So Solo is the one that needs that notoriety. He needs that. He's the one leading the, the, uh, the, the new bloodline. He's the one who's going to be headlining with Roman Reigns, likely in the near future, uh, facing off against Jimmy and Jay and Roman, Paul Heyman in tow, who, who, all, who evens out the four on four. Could it be Cody? Could it be Sammy? Could it be an unknown Uso? I mean, God knows that there's a, enough of these Samoans floating around. I'm sure they could grow one and stick it with Roman and Jimmy and Jay and even things out. Uh, so it, it's, uh, it's about to get real fun. That's all I'll say about that. All right. Dino from Scotland. After hearing DJ Kuzmo's Joe Hendry report last week, I'm super pumped. I'm now looking forward to hearing his report every week. I might be biased, but in my opinion, this is better than the old one. And his guy, gender. Oh, by, by the way, guys, gender is no longer hindered. His 90 day no compete clause is up. I saw it on Twitter. So if you guys care about such things, uh, the gender Mahal uh, the character is now ready to move to potentially independence, TNA, New Japan, AEW. So gender is no longer hindered. One thing, though, I laughed out loud when he said the name of the city. He He's done that thing uh, that every average American seems to do and pronounce the name of the city wrong. It's pronounced Ed- Edinburgh as opposed to Edinburgh. I have kindly messaged DJ on his Discord just so you know, keep him right. Yeah, look, DJ, or uh, uh, Dino, we... we uh, I mean, that's just the way it is, right? And and there's a lot of things that are said from an American perspective overseas that we laugh at. I mean, it's just, it's an accent thing and it's the way that people pronounce language and, you know, it, it, it's it just the way it is. So it now seems like Seamus has new music. Like what the hell? They just brought back his old theme, which I like. So like Braun Breaker, in my opinion, is just in just two weeks, they have made two superstars theme, theme songs worse than they are. Unbelievable. Well, here's a good thing, Dino. Very easily changeable. It's not something that's in stone, especially if there's no connection. The fans have, and the fans have no connection with the Seamus music. They have no connection at all with the Braun Breaker music. The good news is you can change it on a dime. So hopefully they they do that, especially with Braun. With Seamus, they just debuted it. Maybe it'll catch on. Maybe people get used to it. But 
I agree. They should have left it alone. I really miss Roman as champ. I was enjoying his long title reign. I actually wanted his run to continue for at least another few years. Wow. And actually break Bruno Sammartino's record because let's be honest, there are no better time to do so than when Roman won over 1,300 days. Since WrestleMania 40, what has Cody actually done? Ask yourself, was it really worth it? With how Cody's title reign has went since until now, it's pretty much lame in my opinion. I totally understand I'm probably in the minority who wanted Roman Reigns to continue. I really miss him as longest reigning champion of the modern era, and I think Cody hasn't really lived up to expectations as champion in my opinion. I possibly still haven't gotten over Roman losing or reigning for so long. Dang. Well, Dino, yeah, you, you're, you're, you're in the minority from the perspective of if Roman was still considered a heel, because there's a lot of people now that are like, Oh, I miss Roman that, you know, just a few months ago, we're, we're, we're just begging for Roman to drop the belt. It's so boring. He needs to go. And all of a sudden they're the biggest Roman Reigns fans. So fans are fickle, but assuming that you're not in that camp and you actually in the moment at WrestleMania 40 wanted him to continue reigning as champion. I'll take you at your word. A few years would have been difficult to do. There's a lot they would have had to sacrifice because the, the idea was with, with WWE and with Triple H taking over the message they wanted to convey to the fans and to not just the fans, but the, the larger stakeholders and shareholders of TKO. Things are changing. Vince McMahon is gone, right? Well, the winds are a change in and you can't send that message if you continue to put the same champions out there with the same formula. I mean, you would have really had to sacrifice Cody Rhodes's character. Because Cody Rhodes' character um, needed to win that. I think the fans would have maybe kind of turned on the company a little bit. And maybe even Cody's character after losing a second time at WrestleMania. It'd be difficult. You would have. I mean, they already, they already sacrificed a lot with that reign. A lot of people took a lot of losses that hurt a lot. Uh, for that title reign. And they, there was a lot of sacrifice at the altar of that reign. And I think to continue to do that for another few years, all so they could say that Hulk Hogan's record and Bruno San Martino's record are broken. Is it really worth all that? I mean, again, you, you're saying you're basically halfway through the run at WrestleMania 40. He would have been halfway through the run. That'd be a lot. It'd be a lot. And by the way, if you didn't see Hulk Hogan, and I mean, I don't know, this isn't about politics, but since Hulk Hogan appeared on a at a political convention, it is worth mentioning. If you want to see politics and Hulk Hogan collide, go watch Hulk Hogan's uh, you know, speech to introduce Donald Trump at the Republican National Convention. Uh, that was, I, I don't know if you'll find, some people may find it funny, entertaining, Take with it what you will, interpret it how you will. But if you want to see Hulk Hogan uh, talk about Donald Trump on a national stage, just it, go watch it if you don't care about such things. Um, so anyway, thanks, Dino. Okay, let's go to uh, another patron, Levi. He says, what if the culmination of the Liv Rhea Dom story is a heel Rhea Ripley? I know much was said that Rhea will be a baby face upon her return, but frankly, she's been a face in the heel group for quite some time. The final segment with Rhea and Dom on Raw with Rhea telling him you're mine tells me that Rhea will seemingly forgive Dom before she turns on him after regaining her title. Ultimately, Don has done nothing wrong and never fully gave in to Liv's actions. Well, Dom didn't also resist the kiss. Like Dom could have easily pushed her away, right? She's half his size. I know Dom isn't viewed as a strong guy. He's still a guy. She's still a woman. She's still a lot smaller. He could have easily pushed her away. I know in today's day and age, we like to believe men and women are women and women are men, which is a whole bunch of nonsense. We see it in front of our eyes. He could have pushed her away, right? So I think that's part of the problem. He also never really cut things off. He kind of, he let it linger. He let it continue. Kind of right on the edge of giving in to Lee, uh, Rhea Ripley and maybe, or I'm sorry, Liv Morgan. And maybe we'll find out that what about that hotel key? Remember that hotel key? Yes. It ended up with Finn Balor, but maybe Dom somehow still got it. There'll be some footage that comes out that 
it exposes Dom as an actual cheater, right? Uh, also, Rhea Ripley, she has been in a heel group, but what about a full baby face run? The fans are ready to embrace her. You can't turn her back heel. The fans aren't going to buy it. Fans are already embra- have already embraced her. Even when she was with Liv, or rather uh, Dom, and she was still going full heel in the crowd, was booing her a little they were they were ready to cheer her they are the ones that forced this turn to go against the tide here what i don't think wwe would be smart to do it it, it would be unnecessarily difficult when you're already just swimming downstream with what the fans want mommy is over you're just getting going i think what's going to happen here is we will have dom fully turn on Rhea. There'll be no more ambiguity. I think you're going to have Dom ending up helping Liv blatantly at the event at SummerSlam. And, you know, no more back and forth with wishy-washy stuff. And you're going to have him, like, without question, help her. And it's to screw Rhea Ripley. And then maybe Rhea Ripley is going to try to hunt down Dom. And, of course, I, I don't want Rhea versus Dom, but I'm sure she's trying to make a case for it. In addition, what when Rhea asked Damien, why is Carlito hanging out in the Judgment Day clubhouse? I think that was her way of asking what happened while I've been gone. Therefore, she doesn't approve of how Priest has been leading Judgment Day, which leads to kicking Priest out of the group. But Priest, here's the thing. Priest and Rhea are both baby faces right now. The two heels are Finn and Dom. Carlito's an in-betweener. And it's a bit of a weird group right now. The group doesn't have an identity. It's mixed. I don't know what Judgment Day is anymore. And I don't know if that really hurts the group in the short term. Because the, the there's characters in that group that are in transition. They all used to be heel. Some of them are staying heel. Two of them are moving on probably to singles careers as baby faces. How do you X them out of the group? We'll see. Because you can't have two heels, two baby faces in a group for long and have that group expect to be successful. Uh, but I don't think that was her way of kind of showing she's going to turn heel and she's going to kick Priest out. You may be right. You, you know, I, I've been wrong. I'm wrong so much, right? I mean, you guys listen to me. But I think that ultimately it's going to be Priest who uh, and, and Rhea who leave. In the end, we get a heel Rhea Ripley with a Finn and JD. Oh, that's right. JD. I'm sorry. I keep forgetting about JD. He's also a heel. Correct. Yes. So there's uh, Finn and JD who are the true heels with Dom. So three heels uh, and Carlito's just kind of hanging out. Uh, A sympathetic face Dominic Mysterio and a full baby face Damien. No, Dom is not turning face. No way. Sorry, uh, Levi. I can't. I can't buy on that. Fans love to hate Dom. They're not about to cheer Dom. I don't care what they do to him. There's really nothing they can do between the mustache and the mullet and his just sle- a sleaziness and his just general look and feel, which is just screaming, screaming heel. No, I, I can't see that. I, I just, I can't. I mean, maybe down the road, we could have a, a, a Dominic Mysterio. That's a baby face reuniting with his long lost father and apologizing, you know, writing his wrongs all that yeah sure there could be a reconciliation down the line nah right now i think dom is going to continue to fall deeper into the heel role Rhea is already in a big baby face role she's universally loved almost by the fans so that's my take all right let's talk to another patron here uh dj he says let me pose two quick questions here about Drew extended suspension and Punk's health. Do you think this extended suspension will go uh, will end on the go home episode of Raw, or will it end at SummerSlam after SummerSlam? And by the way, is Punk medically clear to compete against McIntyre at SummerSlam, or is this highly anticipated match going to get pushed back for Bad Blood in October? Good question. I mean. I don't think they would have been pushing for this match if they didn't think it could actually happen at SummerSlam. I don't think there's just no way they can wait two more months. And that's not till October, like, like early to mid October. 
no way they can wait two more months or rather month and three quarters. You can't, you gotta, I'm sorry, two, is it two months? What the hell was this July? So uh, yeah, yeah. August and October. So the two and a half months, no way. No, 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 no way. Um, so I would say that punk is clear, going to be cleared. I would also say that the suspension is going to be lifted at SummerSlam. I would say, and that's the smart way to go. It's akin back to uh, a little bit, not nearly identical to the um, Triple H Stone Cold Steve Austin rivalry when they weren't allowed to touch each other until the event. Now, they don't have restrictions on attacking one another, but I think the idea is generally the same that the suspension won't be lifted and Punk won't be cleared until SummerSlam making you want to see that match even more. I think that's where this goes. Now to SmackDown, a very interesting backstage backstage segment in case you missed it. Orton stating that he's got Cody's back during this feud with the Rogue Bloodline. And after when this feud comes to an end, it's one of the most obvious heel turns. Heel turns. uh, Randy has his eyes on the Undisputed Championship. I'm excited for whoever WWE creative decides to make this heel turn official because Randy's heel run in 2020 against the likes of Edge Drew and the Fiend Bray Wyatt was so great in my opinion, the best heel run in his career, but I really wish that COVID didn't happen. However, in 24 and going into 2025, I expect more diabolical heel Randy as he competes for Cody's belt because there's so much history of Cody and Randy from their prior years as legacy alongside Ted DiBiase Jr., who knows, maybe Randy could win another world title next year, either winning an opportunity from Elimination Chamber or Money in the Bank. Heal Randy is what's best for business. I miss it so much. DJ Kuzma signing off. See y'all in the Discord chat Friday night. Uh, and we'll get to the, the uh, of course, Joe Hendry report in short order. But let me just say, first, I missed about the Cody Rhodes run. Um, the, the Cody Rhodes, somebody asked me earlier, about Cody, I don't think Cody's lived up to the run. I mean, I said this in my show a few days ago. Anybody that's a Cody Rhodes fan, you got to be honest with yourself. Has this all been worth it? Has all this been worth the Cody Rhodes 100 days as champion? I mean, you can you can kind of give the report card now. Has this really been everything you wanted? Is this really what you wanted? I think it's been underwhelming too, a little bit. It hasn't been terrible. It's just been kind of, eh, you know? Anyway, sorry, DJ. So, Randy Orton, we all know, is going to hit an RKO out of nowhere on Cody. It's going to happen. The question is, though, when? How? Is it at SummerSlam? And that way we have Cody and Randy headed into Bad Blood or the September event. And then, of course, Roman would already be feuding with Solo and his group. And that way, you know, Cody doesn't get sucked back into the bloodline stuff. He'd have his own stuff with Randy. It could. It could. Let's be honest. There's no chance, almost no chance of Solo winning that championship at SummerSlam. So that begs the question. Randy Orton, what happens? I mean, I think there's a very good chance like you said, DJ, this happening sooner than later. Um, he did tease it a little bit on on SmackDown and staring at the belts and saying what he said. And I think Randy could not not team with the Bloodline. He could come out as the Bloodline does what they do. Tama Tonga Tonga Loa look like they're about to screw Cody Rhodes. Here comes the uh, here here comes the enforcer right, um, and. All of a sudden, RKO, RKO, RKO. And Cody Rhodes gets the victory after hitting, you know, 48 crossroads in on uh, on Solo Sokoa. And, you know, of course, Jacob Fatu is the, uh, I didn't mean to call him the enforcer. What do they call him? The Wolverine or something of the bloodline. Um, so, you know, Jacob Fatu maybe even gets RKO. Randy Orton goes on an RKO spree to even the odds, help out his buddy. Kevin Owens maybe probably does make an appearance as well. But after Cody wins, wham, RKO on Cody Rhodes. Thereby, you've got your next opponent. Now, it could happen at SummerSlam, but 
that would mean there's a lot going on there. Do you really want to overshadow whatever Roman's going to be doing or appearing or returning? Or again, I haven't seen SmackDown tonight. I have no clue. Maybe he returned there. I doubt it. But if he did, I'm not privy to it. Do you really want to overshadow the Roman Reigns stuff with a uh, rated R, rated RKO, a uh, RKO on Cody? Do you want that to be its own thing in its own spotlight? Because here's the thing: if Randy Orton does that, well, then where's the Roman Reigns stuff? Is going to overshadow that moment. So I think Randy Orton. Now that I'm thinking about it, it happens very shortly after SummerSlam when Cody's trying to identify his next opponent. That's what I think. Because if you do it at SummerSlam, it muddies the waters too much going on in that main event. So, all right. Well, I appreciate it, DJ. Uh, Let's see here. We're going to get to our next, uh, next patron. And it is, who is this? Charlie. Charlie F. He says, what's going on, everybody? It's Charlie from Milwaukee. With the John Cena retirement tour starting up next year and a lot of people paying or saying that Cena should go for Flair's record of 17 world titles, I would rather see Cena win the IC belt at the first Raw of Netflix and have a year-long title reign with competing up and down, up and down or competing with up-and-coming stars. At the same time, I also want to see him in matches against Randy and Punk, I have a crazy idea for John's last match. Why not have it be John versus Kurt Angle? That's all for this week. Remember to take Casey Kasem's motto and reach for, keep reaching for the stars. Yeah, I forgot that's his that's his tagline. It's like Bob Barker's get your pets spayed and neutered. Yeah, that was right. Keep reaching for the stars. Um, kind of, you know that I don't mean to to crap on Casey Kasem. I I, I was a big I wasn't a big fan of his before he passed and he was a part of many of our Sunday mornings. If you listen to him in the nineties and early two thousands, but it's terrible advice to reach for the stars. Terrible advice because it's never an attainable goal. And maybe it even discourages people from doing anything. If you literally live by reach for the stars well, why am I reaching for something I never gonna be able to get? Terrible advice. I don't mean to break something down like that, but boy, now that I'm thinking about it as a as a grown adult, at least in numbers, maybe not in you know, in, in my brain, but in numbers, the numbers of my age would say I'm grown. <laughs> um, it's horrible advice. Again, it not only is not an attainable goal, but it probably discourages people from even trying. Like I said, like it's just bad however sure um so Kurt Angle versus John Cena yeah sounds great no way and I don't mean that disrespectfully Charlie the reason I say it is Kurt Angle's in no shape Kurt Angle I've watched him in the last uh you know few months doing interviews and walking around or you know wherever he's going he's stiff he's old it would be a terrible match it would be a parody of the match that they could have had um, and maybe even should have had with John Cena and Kurt Angle for his retirement match, which sadly was against you know Baron Corbin, who is as bland as it gets right now. So no, I, I just I'm saying no way because Kurt Angle is not in any shape. Not that he's not in good kind of old man shape, if that makes sense. Um, he just he's got so his his joints are stiff from all of the abuse. Uh, all, all of the things he's done to his body over the years, the number of years wrestling, the bumps he's taken, the Olympic training, uh, the, the guy is still in shape, but that doesn't mean he's anywhere near ring shape. Like he's healthy, but not ready for in-ring competition at all. So, all right, Charlie, thanks. Let's go to Jeff T., He says, got some thoughts to add to the women's division. I feel like from what we've seen in the past years gone, past years, it's gone down. They have two good matches per year at Money in the Bank and the Rumble, and that's about it. What happened to the women's pay-per-view? You think since Steph left, it went down? Two titles, one tag title, 
and you see them what once a month and also just found cody's new youtube show interesting have a good day yeah cody does have a new youtube show he actually i, I saw some of it with la night it's he's sitting on a bus like interviewing la night um the, the, can i see cody in anything but a damn suit even you ardent cody fans does he have to wear a suit I mean, it's. I think he goes to sleep in a suit. He probably showers in a suit. I'm serious. I mean, LA Knight's sitting there and just like, you know, normal, normal clothes, not his ring gear, his clothes. And it's, it, I appreciate that. It's more, it makes him more human. Cody Rhodes is sitting there, you know, like he's, a, you know, a, a corporate CEO at a high rise tower in New York city with a corner office. And, you know, like he's like that. And I remember he even Chris Van Vliet, by the way, this is going way off topic. Ask Cody if he thought, you know, they could turn him heel and Cody's like, oh, no, but he doesn't see the heel in himself. He's not self-aware enough to see how much of a heel he really is. He's got the smile of a heel. He's got the demeanor of a guy that is so self-aware of, and I just said he's not self-aware, but his his appearance anyway, he's self-aware of. Maybe not how he perceives him, how he's actually, how he perceives, uh, fans perceive him. But even Undertaker sees it. He said it multiple times. Mark Calloway has said it multiple times. The best money is going to come with him as a heel. And I totally agree. But Cody doesn't ever see himself turning heel, like ever. Uh, I, I I beg to differ. I really beg to differ. But anyway, that had nothing to do with you, Jeff, and your questions. I don't know why the women never got their own PLE. I have no idea. Because Evolution, remember that? How good that event was? And that was how many years ago? Six years ago plus? I don't even know. It was a long time ago. That was a great event. And they never did anything else. It was just like, oh, yeah, there's a one-off. Here's all the, here's the women. Um, you We're not going to do this again, though. It was a success. I, I don't know why they didn't do it. Why couldn't they do it again? Now, it doesn't need to happen very often. Um, But it was, I, I think it's a good thing to do if you're also trying to get new talent over for the women who don't get a ton of time on raw or SmackDown as it is. It is weird. It is weird that they don't do more with the women. Um, and, and I, I don't know. And now they have people who are saying, let's introduce two new titles. That's a terrible idea. It's awful for, I've, I'm not going to go through the reasons because I say them multiple times a week. Go listen to my previous shows um, from even last week's week in review. Um, why bringing new women's titles in is a bad idea. But, all right. Thanks, Jeff. Let's talk to Shahar. And she says, hi, Matt. I wanted to share something that's come to mind. Isn't the current storyline with Drew a bit familiar? Doesn't it remind you of the storyline with Becky before WrestleMania 35? There, Becky was pissed at Stephanie McMahon because she forced her to go see a doctor in order to get medically cleared for the match with Rhonda. Becky refused and got suspended and eventually attacked Stephanie. And um, I lost my, my spot here. Oh, because of her actions, Triple H told her that if she wants to get her match back, she needs to apologize. It ended up in a triple threat with Rhonda and Charlotte. Yeah, that was horrible. Still agree with that. I still like it's been six years. And I still think that was a horrible decision to put Charlotte Flair in that all to just say Charlotte was in the first women's main event all to sacrifice and be able to say that terrible, terrible. It was the story was Rhonda Becky. I maintain that it's six years later. I still feel no different. The story was Becky Rhonda. And here's the insane part. We never got a one-on-one match with those two. How? How is that even? How, how is that a thing? All because Vince shoehorned Charlotte into that match 
who had no business being in that match. None. That wasn't the story. It muddied the water. It was terrible. The match was okay. I I didn't particularly love the match. It was okay. The ending was oddly sloppy. We all know that. But the story was Ronda Becky. Am I advocating, by the way, for Ronda to come back? Hell no. I think Ronda is an entitled, uh, spoiled, bit of a synonym there, and overrated talent. Um, now she had a great look. She, her promos, though, were bad. Uh, she brought a lot of brand value, name value into the company, but that was how many years ago? Ronda Rousey hasn't had an MMA fight in how many years? And she, you know, I, I don't think he can live on that forever. I think Rhonda is bad for the business. I think at times she feels bigger than the, she feels like she's bigger than the business. I remember she couldn't even say SmackDown women's title at the time. She could just, she would just say SmackDown title. It's like, no, no, no. Hey, Rhonda, you're in the company. Get the name of the belt, right? Uh, so I was, I did not like her at all. I mean, I, she declined pretty quickly in my mind from when she first came in. When she first came in, though, she was badass. I'll admit that. She was tearing stuff up, tearing sets up. I mean, I remember her tag team match with Kurt Angle versus Triple H and Stephanie. Great. I mean, we saw what she could do there. You know, overachieved. But, all right. Oh, where am I at? Um, in Drew's case, he was pissed at Adam Pierce because he let Punk's to uh, he let CM Punk to screw him over and without taking any action punched him with, or, or yeah I got you hit him with an elbow got suspended and now Adam Pierce told him if he wants to come back and get the desired match against Punk he needs to apologize I hope it doesn't mean we get a triple threat with Seth injected into it it should be Drew versus Punk one on one with Drew beating the S out of Punk. Anyway, SummerSlam is going to be epic. Can't wait till next time, my friend. Thank you, Shahar. Good to hear from you. And hope all's well there over there in Israel. Now, Seth, though, what is he doing at SummerSlam? You know, I I don't think he's ready for Punk. It is clearly Drew and Punk. They need that story to to tell that story. If anything, Seth Rollins is probably going to be injected, if you're going to pick one, into the title match with Gunther and Priest. I hope not. I still don't want that. I wouldn't hate it, but I, I wouldn't be as angry as I would be if Punk and Drew had Seth injected into it. I think they the purpose of Seth and Punk uh, with their tension the last several weeks is to simply lay the foundation for that rivalry that's coming up in the next several months to you know maybe a year. It's laying the foundation for it. So, yeah. Thank you, Shar. All righty. So, okay. I Let me check my email one more time. Let me check it, check it, check it here. Um, we have, let's see. Oh, Bo. Is this Bo? Yeah. Uh, Bo Evans says, hey, this is the last email, guys. Based on what we've seen so far, the real live Gunther... Vrie versus Liv, Gunther versus Priest, and plenty other speculated matches. This seems like it could be the best PLE in the Triple H era. That's my quick take about what has happened as of now, but I have some thoughts on the Judgment Day story. I believe Rhea defeats Liv and then attacks Dom. This will injure Dom and will put him out of action for a bit. Eventually, after Dom is back in and, and feeling better, a mixed tag match will take place where Rhea hits Riptide on Dom to secure herself uh, to secure her mystery partner a win. Rhea will leave the Judgment Day and will do her own thing after Bad Blood. And for Priest, he'll lose to Gunther because of JD and Balor interference. After the match, Balor will get a title shot and win his first world championship since he got robbed of the Universal title in 2016. Have a good night. I hope this finds you well. What the hell does Yeet mean? Uh, Rhea's tag partner would be Jey Uso. It could be. I mean, Jey has been hilariously trying to get with Rhea, which is really funny to watch. And uh, it's that's a nice little wrinkle into both characters, really. Now, yeah, yeet can mean anything. It's a verb. It's a noun. It's an adjective. It's probably a sub adjective. It's, you know, it's anything. It's anything you need it to be. Kind of like the F word. Is it not? The F word can be anything and everything at the same time. You know, think about how many ways in which the F word is used. 
You insert yeet instead of the F word? Same way. It's used in the same context, which is to say it's used in almost infinite contexts. So that's what it means. Everything and nothing. It can mean anything you need it to be in the moment, which is also hilarious. Um, and, and really, yeet has, if you can use it the same way the F word is, it has maybe this... It, wouldn't that be the very definition of what the F word is? Which, what is, what does the F word even mean? Is there a definition for it? I think there is. It means to like, to hit or something. But yeet, it's treated the exact same way. Anyway, we're going to get too deep into that. You know, Rhea attacking Dom is going to happen. She will hit a riptide on him. Yes. I don't think Balor is going to get it. I mean, isn't Balor a tag team champion too right now? I don't think that's going to Balor's not in the position for a world title run yet. Um, by the way, he didn't get screwed in 2016. He simply was injured. Um, and then just, he's an unfortunate collateral of circumstance. So yeah, I don't think he necessarily got screwed. He just had bad timing, but, uh, you know, again, riptides coming on Dom, no doubt about that. I just don't want to match with those two because I, for, for so many reasons I've labeled before Rhea and Dom, please. No, no, I don't need to match. We all know that, that Dom isn't going to be able to retaliate against Rhea in any kind of way, unless things change. Maybe they do because they're going TV 14 on, on, uh, on Netflix. Maybe things change. I could be totally dead wrong. And I hope I am. I hope I'm wrong on this, this front. All right. That's enough of the emails, guys. Let's get to uh, the, the few voicemails we do have, and uh, then we'll wrap it up. Hello, WWE Podcast World. This is DJ Kuzmo back at it again on your mailbag show. Records you live on a Wednesday morning, and you know what time it is. It's time to say his name, and he appears. I believe in Joe Hendry. I believe in Joe Hendry. That's right, Joe Hendry is his name. As I get to my first episode of the Joe Hendry Report, this man travels almost everywhere, every place, showing up at any wrestling promotion. He's one of the only wrestlers that I know that works Tuesdays, Thursdays, and Saturdays. One of the hardest working men in professional wrestling, Joe Hendry, as this past Saturday down in Newcastle, he was in a wrestling promotion called North Wrestling as he had a match against Elijah. You know, if you remember him as Elias, formerly known as Ezekiel, as we still don't know who is really Ezekiel and who is Elias. But anyway, let's get back to this matchup. It was a nice matchup between Elijah and Joe Hendry as Joe Hendry gets the win as once again everybody loves Joe Hendry's music as he made his appearance at North Wrestling in Newcastle England. Now let's get to this past Tuesday as we were gearing up for Slammiversary of T-Day. He did show up on NXT as Vic Joseph the commentator of NXT said his name and then he also mentioned that he likes it here on NXT and he may see him a lot more often on NXT. It seems like he's probably picking a feud with Gallus, the trio Scottish heel team in NXT. Now let's get to what's going to be happening this coming Saturday. That's right, folks. This coming Saturday, the Slammiversary TNA, it's TNA's version of WrestleMania as they celebrate their 20th Slammiversary. This is their 20th anniversary of TNA Pro Wrestling as Joe Hedgie will be included in a six-man elimination championship match for the TNA World Championship, which hopefully we will get to see the new and new and new and new TNA world champion in Joe Hendry. Now, with that being said, he is one of the most busiest guys around. So support him with a like, support him by saying his name, support him by listening to his music, and most importantly, believe. This is your guy, DJ Kuzmo, and remember to do... Once again, this is your guy, DJ Kuzmo. Have a blessed week. Believe, say his name, stay with my friends, and peace. All right, well, if the Joe Henry song wasn't already in your head, well, uh, it is now, guaranteed. <laughs> DJ, you are now responsible for the rest of us going the rest of the day with that in our brains. But I appreciate that. All of the updates, what he's doing at TNA and Slammiversary, the uh, the ind the independent promotions that he's appearing in, all of that is you know it's cool cool to hear. Yeah, it's uh you know because a lot of us don't know that probably right. 
And I like WWE bringing in this talent. It's a, it's like the trial run. They're able to try it before they buy it. They're able to, it would, under the Vince McMahon regime, this would almost never happen, right? You got to just either go with them or don't. And Vince was in his own bubble and didn't know about any of the other promotions or even care to know what they were, right? So I think this is a smart strategy by WWE, giving him a trial run in WWE, seeing if the fans react, how they react, how long they react, what they do, what they say, all that, and seeing if they want to commit long-term to this guy. Give him a deal, don't give him a deal, right? You know, think that's a smart way to do business. They don't need to do that with everybody all the time, and it's not possible to do that with everybody given their contract status and everything else. Smart, though. Thank you, DJ. I appreciate it, and uh, I'll talk to you soon. And actually, we're going to end it there as we wrap up the voicemails and wrap up the show as uh, it's time to say goodbye. I will uh, talk to you guys on Sunday for the week in review. Of course, shortly after this show drops, we're going to be dropping the SmackDown review done by Amanda, who is uh, in the UK. And if you guys want to follow her on X, Amanda SD pod. Is, is that what it is? Oh, boy. This is embarrassing because I... It's uh, Amanda SD. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's Amanda SD pod. So check her out, guys. I'm sure she would love if you gave her a follow. Um, she's just getting started over there on X. So I'm sure she would uh, love if you guys gave her a follow. She'll follow you back. Amanda SD pod is the name of the game for our SmackDown review host. And uh That'll do it for me tonight, guys. I will talk to you in a couple of days as we get back to the weekend review. Take care. Talk to you next time. Rock out of Stone Cold. The Hellraiser is back. Here we go. Evolution of the Shield. John Cena versus the Show. Stop her. Hulk Hogan and The Rock in the same ring. You will never take my place at the head of the table. Undertaker on the Hell's Gate submission. Oh, my God. What? Michaels just kicks Cena's head off. The Monday Night Wars has come to WrestleMania. It will be The Rock. It will be Austin one-on-one.